it from getting bail since their cases haven't gone to court in sufficient time. We expect to have a new paradigm in play come April at the latest, which means that new judges will be appointed, albeit on a temporary basis, new prosecutors, that swift justice will be seen by the Bahamian people to be in full flow, and that this whole aspect of criminals being allowed out on bail to commit further crimes, hopefully will be brought to an irreducible minimum, if not stamped out completely. And I'm therefore seeing that as a major new plank in our move forward, where we once and for all will not sit down and just allow the justice system to be played in the way that is being played by criminals and even the people who represent them. National Security Minister Dr. Bernard Audit reiterates that critical to reducing murder and other violent crimes is the public coming forward with information, particularly family members who know what their relatives are doing. But he admits there is a high level of fear as witnesses and those with information regarding crime, fear especially being identified. The Christie administration has moved to address this concern. There are provisions for the public to call police anonymously with information. Then, thanks to new legislation passed, there's a witness protection scheme. Where witnesses can be uh, accommodated in uh, places uh, of safe in safe houses, uh, where they can be assisted with their daily living, and where they can where they will be protected at all times by by the system, either by police officers or or otherwise as it's required. And so, um, and we we have had persons who have assisted us in that way over the course of, of the years, which has led to us being able to have now incarcerated many very um, vicious criminals. Now in our next report, the Prime Minister talks about saturation patrols and how it's expected to impact the crime dilemma. Clint Watson, ZNS Network News. Major inroads in the fight against crime are being made. National Security Minister Dr. Bernard Nottage says his ministry is pumping considerable funding and energy into preventative programs, and they're seeing the positive impact. He says while violent crimes have increased and they're now placing even greater attention on this, there's been a decline in crimes against people and property. Um, we found the introduction of the Urban Renewal 2.0 program as having been extremely beneficial because what it has done is introduced members of the Royal Bahamas Police Force to communities throughout New Providence in a non-combative kind of way, uh, where they have been seeking to find ways in which they can help residents um, to uh, get jobs, to repair their homes, to, to solve any local problems that they might have with their neighbors, which prevents the uh, commit committal of, of crimes. And, and so I think that that has to be continued. Well, the Ministry of National Security has also rolled out a number of programs aimed at preventing young people from getting involved in a life of crime and rehabilitating those who find themselves going down that path. All of these stem from the presence of urban renewal. People who go into the communities know that there are lots of people with hardships. Unemployment is a major factor. Um, there are persons who, as a result of unemployment, do not have the income to, 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 to afford the ordinary things, to keep their lights on, to, to, to feed their children. Some, some of our, our young mothers and fathers who have children of school age don't send children to school because they say they don't have, they don't have money to give them for lunch. These are the kinds of things that we are discovering. We know they're there, and Urban Renewal is helping us to address them. You can't blame Urban Renewal uh, um, for, for, for people's bad behavior or people's criminal behavior. The people to blame for that are the people who have responsibility for those who are conducting uh, um, themselves in that way. Parents, guardians. Well, the government has already consented to working closer with the church to address community deficiencies and partnered with community psychologists and specialists to provide the help that some residents need in rehabilitation. 
28 males, 10 females and 5 children made up the group of illegal Haitian migrants brought into the capital from Eleuthera last evening. But immigration officials are set on beefing up patrols throughout the country to ensure that the illegal immigrants continue or the population continues to be reduced. Director of Immigration William Pratt says they will not be lenient with those who try to circumvent the law. Arjunea Noel Ferguson has more on that. Director of Immigration William Pratt is convinced that regular patrols inland for illegal immigrants will help curb the vexing problem that has plagued the country for years. He admitted that the problem is even greater on islands of Abaco, Eleuthera, and Exuma. Because many of the, of the illegal Haitians would quickly find um, a hideout place. And so that has been a challenge for us in the major islands like Exuma, Eleuthera, Abaco, where there's a major Haitian population, it is more difficult for us. Now, the other migrants may not be as difficult. I know in Grand Bahama, in particularly, we, we have a problem with the smuggling operations. And so many of these migrants, they enter the Bahamas um, by Cuba Airlines or Cuban or other airlines. They enter legally and then they move to Grand Bahama where they are housed in some safe house until they can can be um, smuggled into the U.S. Now, Director of Immigration William Pratt says there are stiff penalties for those who think they can get away with harboring illegals. Those who hired them, once we catch them in their employ, we're going to prosecute to the full extent of the law. Uh, for those Haitians who are here legally, we ask that you not harbor illegal migrants because again if we catch them in your homes you're harboring them hiding them away from us we would ensure that whatever status you may have we would make recommendation to the immigration board to have those status revoked and while one would expect shanty towns to be the first spot for immigration officers to find illegals pratt noted that in most instances this is not the case illegal haitians do not live in shanty towns when we have um, operations in those shanty towns, we find about 95 or 99 percent of those persons are legal. And most of them, if they're not third, second Haitian Bahamians, um, they have work permits, permanent residence. The, the illegal Haitians, usually we need intelligence to find them because when they come, they hide out in houses and in apartments that you would not think they are. Janae Noel Ferguson, ZNS Network News. A 29-year-old man police believe is responsible for that deadly shooting in the Fox Hill area nearly two weeks ago made his first appearance in the South Street Magistrate Court today. And as Fern Carey tells us, the defendant is facing four counts of murder and seven attempted murder charges as well. Surrounded by police, 29-year-old Bernard Road resident Peter Roll arrived at court to face a laundry list of serious charges in connection with that horrific drive-by shooting in Fox Hill just two days after Christmas Day. Police say the incident unfolded when the driver of a dark-colored Honda vehicle pulled near to the Fox Hill Park and the occupants inside opened fire, killing four and injuring seven others. The tragedy left Fox Hill residents and the nation in shock. In court, Roe shook his head, apparently in disbelief, and cried throughout the arraignment as Chief Magistrate Joanne Ferguson Pratt charged him with killing Shaquille Demerit, Claudia Zeno Davis, Shanique Sands, and Eric Morrison. He was also charged with attempting to kill Samuel Ferguson, Leroy Taylor, Janet Davis, Chino Davis, Tremaine Pratt, John Davis, and Benjamin Demerit. Following the arraignment, the Chief Magistrate asked Roll, who was not represented by an attorney, why he was crying. Roll immediately raised the issue of an alibi. Now, Roll claims that he was standing through a corner on Dorset Street at the time of the alleged incident, and he says there are more than 15 people who can back up his story. He also claims that a convenience store called BK's has surveillance footage that can back up his story. The court noted his alibi, however, bail was denied and Roll was remanded to prison. He returns to court on March 18th for service of voluntary bill of indictment papers. That means a preliminary hearing will not take place and the case will be fast-tracked to Supreme Court for trial. Fern Carey, ZNS Network News.
Also from court today, police have closed their investigations into the December 26th murder of Antonio Curtis. Today, 24-year-old Baltic Avenue resident Kevin Brown appeared before the court and charged with Curtis's death. Police say Curtis was killed on Fowler Street off East Bay Street during the early morning hours on Boxing Day 2013. In court, Brown was not required to enter a plea to the charge. Bail was denied and he was remanded to prison. The case has been adjourned and attorney Cecil Hilton is representing Brown. In our first look at whether a strong cold front is presently approaching the island of Grand Bahama will be followed by a blast of Attic air which will see temperatures tumble in the 50s in some parts of the Northwest Bahamas tomorrow morning. But outside of our studios just now, we have partly cloudy skies, temperatures 77 degrees, relative humidity 70%, your winds are calm, barometric pressure 1017.0 millibars, that's 30.03 inches and it is rising. But stay tuned, temperatures around the family fallows, travel and boating forecast is still to come. Well, still ahead tonight, how to chart a course for 2014. A Christmas donation destined for our precious pearls turned up missing. We'll tell you who may have it coming up in the Bahamas tonight. Find out who won the Bull Ridge Regatta. You're watching the Bahamas tonight. This portion of the news is brought to you by Lux Men's Warehouse. 